Good morning. My name is Tiffany Oliphant. I'm the communications manager for the Washtenaw County Road Commission. Thank you for joining our virtual construction information meeting about the roundabout project planned at the intersection of Bemis Road and Whitaker Road. This morning, I will go over some housekeeping items before turning it over to staff for a presentation about the project, and then we will open the meeting up for your questions. Joining me today is uh, project manager, Nate Murphy, and senior project manager, manager Aaron Burkholz. <laughs> this meeting uh, is being recorded, uh, audio and video is being recorded, and will be posted in the next few days on wcroads.org. After the presentation, you'll be asked to virtually raise your hand during a Q&A session. I will provide instructions at that time on how to do this from either your computer, the Zoom app, and your Touchstone phone. The chat feature for this meeting is turned on. If you have a question during the presentation, feel free to ask it in the chat and we will address it during the Q&A portion. You can find the chat window at the bottom of your screen. Now, Nate, the floor is yours. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our pre-construction public meeting for the Bemis and Whitaker Road Roundabout. We are, um, you can go to the next slide. We are planning to, uh, can you go to the next slide there? Here is the uh, aerial of the of the intersection. We'll be starting the work. This is a, a new roundabout that we're going to be putting in uh, starting in mid June. Uh, we have a contractor on board, and uh, the the intersection there, Whitaker Road and Bemis Road, is uh, the site. So if we go to the next slide, the existing condition is a stop controlled intersection, meaning just a four way stop um, with uh, which can be a, a real problem for both safety and for volume of traffic. So we have uh, planned to begin building this single lane roundabout. Uh, you might have noticed that there are uh, utility companies out there doing their relocations currently and will be ongoing until we get going uh, with our contractor in the mid-June timeframe. Um, for the project, we will be installing drainage and storm sewer to, to collect the, the storm water that would fall on the roadway. Uh, we'll be constructing concrete curb and islands. You might have seen these around the county. They're becoming more and more, um, more uh, we have many more of them now. Uh, you've probably driven through many of them. Uh, so there'll be this one will be very similar to those around uh, this one. The closest one nearby is at uh, Merritt and Whitaker that is similar to the one we're doing here. Um, so we'll be in constructing the concrete curb and um, islands. We'll be placing the HMA pavement, just the asphalt pavement, um, and installing permanent signs, pavement markings. We'll be uh, putting in four lights, uh, overhead lights for safety, um, and then we'll be doing the restoration, uh, meaning planting the grass and making it look good. Here's the overall, this is the bird's eye view or the plan view of the proposed roundabout, um, kind of drawn in as a model to show you what it'll look like. Um, there'll be a center island and the splitter islands that are uh, in each quadrant, they will be a stamped red concrete uh, to give visual um, indication uh, for the user as they go through the roundabout that'll help uh, as, a, as a visual as you're approaching it. Um, next slide. This project is funded by the Michigan Transportation Funds, we, the MTF uh, that we receive from license registration fees and from the fuel tax. Uh, as well as a countywide roads millage. Um, and we have, we've put this just, uh, we've put it out for bid. It's, it's the, the project came in at 1.2 million. And we'll be starting our, with our contractor around uh, June 19th, um, weather permitting and uh, 
that uh, everything lines up right, uh, that's when we plan to close the intersection. Um, and we have an estimated completion of uh, September um, with you know all of the different things, weather and um, con contractor scheduling. Um, that's our uh, that's our goal that we'd be done September one. Um, so yes, let's go on to the next slide. So this these are a few pictures to show you how how construction goes. We we close the intersection. We remove the existing pavement and grade the site uh, to the new uh, layout. Um, this is uh, as we uh, get the grading completed, we add stone base material before we put the pavement in. This is compacted and um, as is prepared for the new pavement. Uh, next slide. Then we start forming up the splitter islands. Uh, this is a picture uh, from a, a previous site, but you can see the formwork going in. Um, and once those are poured, the next slide, you can see the there's the curb poured and we'll fill in that section in the middle with the, the concrete. Next, yeah, there we go. Um, and you can see it kind of taking shape. In the center, uh, we will have a, a full concrete island uh, with the, the red concrete stamped uh, that'll go across the full center of this this roundabout. Um, yeah, there there we have it with the pavement. Uh, the the diameter of this one is, as I mentioned, similar to the Merritt and Whitaker Road intersection. Uh, with a, I we have a. Um, if you take a circle around the, the the perimeter of that one, it's about 110 feet, so it's a a, a pretty good sized one. Um, next slide. This is an aerial. Actually, we can you go back to that one if you would. This is the aerial uh, from a previous location. You can see we've got the pavement markings on the on the pavement uh, to help uh, the user, and and then we would open it up. So. Um, while we're doing the construction, if we go to the next slide, we just want to uh, emphasize that the, the road will be closed, the intersection will be closed. We will have a, um, you know, a hard closure to keep the workers and um, you know, the, the users safe during the, the construction. We ask that no one uh, moves or goes around the barriers uh, just to keep our, our, our workers safe uh, we will be maintaining access for the the residents that are within the area. The this is the detour uh, that we have, and we'll be posting this. Um, we have Stony Creek down to Willis and over to Tuttle Hill. Um, and for these projects, because it's a, a paved road, we we do sign the detour uh, on paved roads. Uh, so you might see that there there might be some other road that you might find as a better route. We sign it for uh, a paved uh, road section so that um, you know the trucks particularly have a paved uh, route that that can be a, the official um, detour. Next slide, please. I wanted to kind of highlight how how this closure is going to be set up because we do have residents and other drives courts. You have the Foxtail Court that's the closest there on off of Bemis and then farther out Jack Pines Drive. Um, because, be, uh, for the construction of the roundabout, we felt it necessary to put a hard closure on the west side here. You can see to the, to the west of Jack Pine Drive, we're gonna put a concrete barrier Cross there to limit the traffic from coming into our work zone. Um, this will require that both Foxtail Court and uh, Jack Pines Drive go around. Uh, you can see Foxtail Court will have to go to the west there and then go south through Jack Pines Drive. Um, and then that'll go out toward uh, Whitaker Road. Um, the other three legs will be closed for through traffic as well. Again, I want to highlight that for residents, you can see the one there in the northeast quadrant and in the southeast quadrant, 
uh, we will be maintaining their access to their driveways. Uh, but for all through traffic, we uh, ask you to use the, uh, the, the sign detour. Next slide. We will coordinate with the uh, mail delivery, uh, trash pickup, schools and emergency services uh, so that they're aware of this closure and um, we'll keep, keep them up to date. Here's my contact information. If you have any issue uh, that you'd like to talk to me, I'm available and can I'll do my best to help you out with that. Um, is that the last slide there? Yes. So I'll turn it. Oh, we can talk about this one. Um, for this year, as I mentioned, we're Bemis and Whitaker. That's the center one. We'll be constructing that. Um, for upcoming construction seasons, we're, we have along this corridor, we're, we're working on two other roundabouts. Um, next year in 2024, we'll be doing the Willis and Whitaker roundabout. And we'll be starting that after school is out for the summer, similar to what we're doing for, for Bemis here. We're waiting till school is out. Um, but that'll be in 2024 at Willis and Whitaker. And then in 2026, we'll be doing the uh, roundabout, a new one there at Martz and Whitaker. So just a heads up for upcoming uh, work. And um, Tiffany, is that is that the last of it? Yes, that is that that is the last of it. Burke, do you have uh, a comment? Sure, thank you. Uh, uh, very much appreciate Nate your uh, good overview of this upcoming project and providing some uh, uh, very pertinent details as to the uh, work we're going to be performing uh, coming up starting here in mid June at the intersection there at Whitaker and Bemis. Um, again, my name is Aaron Burkholz. I'm a senior project manager here at the Road Commission, and uh, I'm going to be working with Nate on this project. Uh, basically, I provide uh, any support he might need uh, as we start the work out here with our contractor. Um, a couple of additional comments I'll make. Uh, you know, we do have a limited construction window here in Michigan. Uh, so in general, when we do uh, intersection improvements, when we do asphalt paving, uh, that's going to occur, occur between the the end of April and uh, late October in general. Um, so we certainly have to factor that in uh, when we when we select a schedule for a project. Um, and then we certainly consider uh, uh, those uh, those facilities that would generate a lot of traffic, such as Lincoln Consolidated Schools campus. And so in this case, that's why we decided. Uh, to go ahead and, and wait until school was out for the summer uh, to start the project in mid-June. And then certainly uh, we're going to work with our contractor and put forth our best effort to complete this project before school goes back in for next year. Uh, but there are a lot of factors that influence uh, construction work, road construction work. Uh, we're subject to Mother Nature. Um, and that's always unpredictable. So hopefully this summer, uh, June, July, and August will provide us with a good weather window uh, so that we don't have a lot of rain days in there. Um, also, uh, uh, the uh, acquisition of materials, while it's not as uh, severe an issue as it was shortly after the 2020 pandemic, uh, it still continues to be an issue. So again, we uh, work with our contractor to make sure that they know well in advance what materials they're going to need to perform the, the prescribed construction work. Um, uh, Nate went over our intentions as far as uh, closing the intersection. And again, uh, we will maintain uh, traffic entry uh, for those property owners that are within the closure but no one will be allowed to drive through the intersection. So what that would mean is, is that if you're to the west, to the north, the south, or the east of that intersection, you're going to have to drive around. Uh, you can't come through that intersection during the work uh, because it uh, poses a safety risk to motorists, to the uh, employees, the construction workers who are working in the intersection, um, and it 
it impacts the efficiency and our ability to complete the project. Um, so again, uh, individuals that are within the construction influence area are going to be allowed access, but uh, they are going to have to exit by some other means. They have to follow the detour to get around the intersection itself. Um, he went over that Bemis Road to the west of Whitaker Road, uh, there between Jack Pine Drive and Ammerheim Drive is going to be completely closed off. Uh, we are going to hard close that. Um, and we certainly recognize for the residents that live there in that southwest corner, uh, that's going to create some additional miles that you'll have to drive to go around. But again, our intention is to create as safe and efficient an environment as we can to complete this project on time. Um, we have been and will continue to be in contact with local law enforcement. Uh, certainly, uh, we appreciate their support on so many of our projects. And oftentimes, uh, what has to occur uh, for the, the closure to really uh, take effect is we have to request uh, increased law enforcement uh, to keep an eye on drivers who might otherwise disregard the uh, signs and the barricades that we put up. Um, and Nate mentioned the sign detour. And again, we certainly recognize that there are several other ways around this intersection closure. And some of those ways around involve local unpaved county roads. Um, Nate and I have been in conversation with our operations department staff. Um, our intention is to respond uh, if there is a greater need on some of those unpaved routes. Uh, if traffic, if motorists decide to follow the unposted detour and take the shortest route around the intersection, then certainly that's something that we'll be working with our operations department on uh, so that we can keep those roads in a reasonable condition. So again, uh, appreciate uh, Nate and Tiffany uh, working together on this presentation, providing all these uh, pertinent details and appreciate all of you taking the time to attend today. Thank you. Thank you, Burke. Thank you, Nate. Uh, now I will show you how to get to our project page so you can sign up. Uh, actually, let me uh, now go to Google where so when you go to google you'll go to wcroads.org in the search you'll put that in the search now you'll get to our website here at the top bar this hot bar here it says road work and construction click on the current projects it's a drop down menu and you'll see current projects there's the page below and you'll see a, a page there that will have a map of Washtenaw County and all the projects happening within Washtenaw County in the 2023 construction season. And if you come on out, you'll see different cards with uh, the projects happening. So we'll go to this project, which would be the Bemis Road project, Bemis and Whitaker Road project, which is the roundabout. So here you will go to the Bemis Whitaker Road Roundabout. You'll see all the information about this project. You'll see Nate Murphy's contact information. Also helpful links about this project plus a detour map. Uh, and you'll get all the information on this project. Also, you can sign up and subscribe to our project updates right here on this uh, when you click on this tab. Now I'll go back to the project. And this is where I'll open it up for question and answer. So if you're viewing this meeting on your computer, first make sure you click join audio. You can then raise your hand by clicking the participants or reactions button on the bottom of your screen and then raise your hand. If you dialed into the meeting from your touch tone phone, you can raise your hand by dialing star nine. As the meeting host, I will unmute participants with raise hand one at a time. I will announce your username or last four digits of your phone number when it is your turn to speak. We are happy to answer as many questions as possible, but please be respectful of each other's time. If you have questions uh, before you're called on, 
If you have, if your question is answered before you're called on, uh, make sure you lower your hand. Lower, uh, make sure you can lower your hand by clicking on the lower hand button or dialing nine. So now I'll begin to take a few questions. Uh, well, I had one comment. Um, Carrie Howe said, thank you for doing the hard closure at Jack Pine, Jack Pine Drive. I'm sorry, Jack Pine Drive. Uh, oh, I have several questions. Oh, Carrie, you actually have a question. So I will ask you to unmute. Yes, hi, thanks. So actually you did um, pass on my comment. I, I just wanna say thank you very much for listening to Jack Pine, uh, Lincoln Pines um, residents at the meeting earlier this year, it was late last year, where we were really were concerned about people using our subdivision as a cut through. And um, by seeing that you're putting a hard stop, I know it'll make it more you know, inconvenient for us to have to go around, but I would way rather do that than see people coming through our subdivision, flying through there and, uh, you know, possibly causing accidents or people getting hit. So thank you. I, I just really want to express that. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, Ashley had a question. Uh, is there a plan to pave Bemis Road on the west side of Hitchenham? Yes, actually, there that one will be uh, constructed next year, I believe. Uh, that that portion, Bemis to the west, um, and that's correct, Nate. Yeah, we're currently working on the design plans for that portion of Bemis Road uh, that would be between uh, Stony Creek Road and Hitchingham Road. Uh, so again, the design is ongoing on that. Uh, certainly, our, our hope is and our target is is to have that under construction next year. Um, so, again, I uh, appreciate the question. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, I'm going to make sure I'm going to say your name, uh, Donnell uh, Cusano. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hi, um, just a quick question about the closure details there. Is the... Whitaker Road, the little sort of orange barrier there, um, is that accurate as to where it is? I, I only ask because I'm a couple couple doors up uh, Whitaker to the north there. Um, I'd say Nate. Uh, it's like a little bit farther north. Is that what you mean? The north. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I am two driveways to the north of where the little orange bar is showing. I'm just wondering if I'm gonna, if it, if I'm gonna be within the project zone or not. Yeah, it actually goes to the second driveway there. Uh, okay. That, um, it's just beyond that second driveway that, I'm sorry about that, that um, that's not very clear. Yeah, so it, it will be um, beyond the second driveway on the, in the Northwest quadrant, yes. Okay, great. I'm not one of the, yeah, there's two driveways that are opposite each other. It won't go as far as that one. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, just one more quick question. What sure. do you, do you know what hours of day you expect construction work to actually be going on? Is it just sun up to sundown or? Um, I believe it would be, you know, yeah, be seven to seven. I, I'm not, the, the contractor is, um, I, I don't know of any no, noise ordin ordinances over here. No, I don't think there are. Typically it would be, you know, 7 a.m. to six or seven in the, in the afternoon. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you. I have another one. Uh, Tanya Cravens, could you install a speed limit sign with the digital readout on Jack Pine Drive? I foresee traffic using Jack Pine Drive as a cut through. Thanks. Well, because we have uh, the hard closure just to the west of Jack Pine Drives, um, so you can see that red bar there, um, and the closure at the intersection there should not be that many traffic we uh, going through there. We, we put that closure so that we would limit the traffic coming into our work zone. Um, as, a, as a side effect of that, 
the the traffic going through Jack Pines and Foxtail. Well, Foxtail's not a cut through, but Foxtail will have to go out to the out through Jack Pines down to Norfolk. Um, but as far as tra cut through traffic, I would expect very little, uh, just because of that hard closure there to the west of Jack Pines. Yeah, and I'll, I'll comment as well. Um, so uh, uh, we commonly refer to those uh, electronic speed signs as speed trailers. Um, and uh, the Road Commission actually does not uh, uh, install those. Uh, that's something that generally, uh, it would be something the township would coordinate uh, with law enforcement, local law enforcement, to have those type of uh, uh, speed trailers set up. Um, uh, as Nate noted, uh, with the, the hard closure of Bemis Road uh, to the west of Jack Pine Drive, uh, maybe for the first one or two days, you may get some motorists that try to go through there thinking they can get around, uh, but it will quickly, they will realize they can't get through there. Um, and we're going to be supplementing with some additional barricades and signs to try to convey to motorists that they're not going to be able to get through. But realistically, there are going to be some motorists that ignore those signs on the first couple of days and think they can cut through there. But again, with that hard closure, that should come to a stop uh, fairly quickly. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, phone number, last four digits, 7907 to unmute. Uh, seven, seven, nine, oh, seven. Go ahead. Are you there? Okay. I guess not. Okay, we're going to go with Valletta Thorpe. I'm going to ask you to unmute. I, I just wanted, you said there would be increased security from police. Um, so people aren't where they're not supposed to be, but how will they know those of us who are supposed to be? I live on Foxtail. Yep. I just want to make sure. sure I get home. And and oftentimes it's it's as easy as when a motorist comes in, they ask them, you know, they'll say, well, where are you going? And, you know, in your case, you would say, well, I'm going to Foxtail Court. This is the way I need to get to and from home. Most other motorists, if, if a police officer pulls them over and they say, where are you going? Most of them don't have a good answer for that. They they tend to stammer, and uh, and then it becomes clear to the the uh, police officer that they're not supposed to be in there. Okay, thank you, thank you, Valetta. Are there any more questions? If not, then. Once again, here's the project information for the project manager, Nate Murphy. If you have any questions that are left unanswered and you find yourself having more questions, please enter your contact information into the chat so we are able to reach out to you at a later date. If you dialed into the meeting from your touch tone phone, please press star nine to raise your hand so we can take down your information. Always remember you can also uh, sign up for our project updates. That's also in the chat. Uh, feel free to get those. We send those out as the project is progressing. Thank you again for joining today's meeting regarding the roundabout project at Bemis and Whitaker Roads in Augusta and Ypsilanti Townships. Enjoy your day and take care. <laughs>